Hello, YouTubers and FreeCAD enthusiasts. This is a simple little thing I thought I'd walk you through making because it's kind of fun and I think it's kind of cool looking. So this would be like a desk sign. And if you look at it, you can see how the letters just kind of rotate up out of the uh, sign. Pretty cool, huh? So it's it looks really simple, but there's one gotcha. And so I thought I'd just do a quick little tutorial on how to make this. So we'll start with a new file. And we're going to go in Part Design. So I've got a, a body, and we're ready to go. Now the first thing we're going to do, instead of drawing the base, we are going to create the text first, so we know how big to make our base. So we're going to go over to the Draft Workbench, and we're going to use, look for the S here, where it says Shape from Text, creates a shape. This is, a D, this is the Shape String tool. And this is what we're going to use to create our text. Now, as I'm moving the pointer around here on the grid, you can see the coordinates over there on the left are changing. So when I come over here, I'm going to reset point to set that back to zero. And down here is our string. And this is where we're going to put in whatever we want on our sign. I'm going to use my amateur radio call sign here. Uh, height is going to be the height in millimeters of the letters. So for a decent sized desk sign, about 30 millimeters will be good. Should be big enough, but not too big to fit on our printer bed. And then finally we have to choose a font. Now I have a default in here. You can set a default in the preferences for the draft workbench. But you can browse to a font of your choosing. Under Linux, uh, your system fonts would be in USR, User System Resources, uh, fonts, or share, sorry, share, fonts, and you would want to look for true type. Now I'm running the flat pack, so I don't see it here. It just shows me some defaults. But you would choose your font. I happen to have my own fonts folder in my home directory. I'm going to go there and choose one that I know I want to use. And I was out here with my mouse pointer again, so you can see those coordinates there on a the left change. We'll reset point. Uh, so I've got a font chosen. I've got a height chosen. I've got my string in there. And when I hit OK, the text appears over here. Now, two things. One, we want to turn off this grid. That grid comes on whenever you go to the draft workbench. So look for this little waffle icon that says toggle grid. Click that. We'll go back to the part design workbench. And in our model now, we should see a shape string down here. Now, I am going to change where that center point is for that shape string. So with this selected, I'm going to come down here to find justification. Right now it says bottom left. And we're going to change this to middle center. Nothing looks like it happened, but as soon as I click out here, it updates. So now you can see that our axis cross here is in the very center of the shape string. And that's important because now we're going to draw the base for our um, sign. And I wanted this centered so I'd know the boundaries to draw the base out to. I'll come up here and do a create a sketch. We'll put it on the XY plane. And then I'm going to use the centered rectangle. I'll move in here to the center until I see the, the origin point light up and that little cross coincident constraint appear. And then I'll click and I'll drag out my rectangle. Visually, I'll get it about like I want. And then we'll look at the dimensions that are in there. Um, at the bottom there, you can see it's, uh, our width is 162.35. So we'll round that off to 162. I'll type in 162. I'll hit Tab. Now we're, um, you can see the highlights shifted over to the uh, vertical dimension there, which says 41.44. And that looks good, so we'll round that off and just enter 41 and enter. All right, there's our frame. We'll close the sketch. The sketch is highlighted. I'm going to pad it. We'll say about 5 millimeters. Ah, we'll go 4 millimeters for the base. It doesn't have to be very big. And now we're ready to move our text up to the top. But a note on fonts. For this to work, the bottom edge 
of the font has to be on the baseline has to be on a baseline it has to be exactly a straight line across you can't have part of it going below the baseline and so a way to um, check that will be to convert this shapes either we can do one of two things we can convert this shape string into a sketch or we can add a sketch and draw a line to see if we're on the baseline so I think we'll do that we're gonna leave the shape string as a string uh, we're going to move it up into the body. If you look over here on the left, if I collapse the body, you'll see that the shape string by default is outside of the body. It needs to be in there before it can be added to our base. So I'm going to drag it into the body. Now it's in there. And then we want to map it to the surface of our base. We hit space to bring the pad back. And you'll see presently the shape string is underneath it because it's on the... Uh, it's on the XY plane, it's on the, the origin. So we're going to map it to this surface. And the way we do that is we select it. And we come down here to Map Mode under Attachment. It says Deactivated. I'm going to click. And a little three-dot menu appears. I'll click that. And that lets us select where we're going to map this object to. Up here at the top, this button says Selecting. That means that we are now selecting our map surface so I'll just come out here and click on this and you can see that the shape string popped right up onto that surface okay now it is mapped to the top of our plaque okay now I was saying we want to make sure that our font does not go below the line so you want to choose a font that doesn't um, I know this one doesn't but I'm going to show you how you can tell we're going to click on this surface and make a sketch. So now you can see while we're doing our sketch, we can still see the shape string, right? So I'll come up here and I'll just do a horizontal line that is wider than the shape string. And if you look at the right, uh, where my pointer is there on the right, you can see the automatic constraints that are going to appear and there's a horizontal constraint. If I go f down far enough, it disappears. If I come back up, it comes back in. You want that horizontal constraint, you want this line to be horizontal, and I'll click. And then I'll right click to cancel the tool. Now I've got a line. And what I can do is I can bring this up here and I can look. And I can see. Bring that right on up. And zoom in a bit. And what I'm looking for is I'm looking for the, the flat parts of the text, like the bottom of this L. And is that, is there nothing that goes lower than that? Because I need something to pivot this around. Nothing goes lower than that. So I could actually use like the bottom of the L as the center of my rotation when I rotate the text. But if something does go a little lower, in fact, I can't, quite, maybe it doesn't. Let me, let me double check this here. Oh, yep. Look at this. You see how our line which is lined up now with the bottom of the other letters. Oops. And look at the bottom of this nine. It's going below the line. So what I need to do is I need to bring this line down so it's right at the bottom edge of that. There we go. And now nothing is going below that line. Nope. 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 Okay. Nothing is going below that line. All right, so that's important because if something went below the uh, line and we were trying to rotate the text, it would fail because that part that goes below would self-intersect, meaning it would cross itself. So what I've done by creating this sketch with this line is I've created a pivot point now that I can use to rotate the text around. And I know that nothing is going below that line. So I'm going to close and that's going to be our sketch for the rotation. All right, so let's rotate our text. I'll come up here and I'll select the shape string. We are going to use the rev revolution or the revolve. When I click it, it's probably going to fail because it doesn't know what to rotate it around. So I'll come down here and it's where it says axis, select reference. And you know what we're going to select? We're going to select this line that we made. And there it goes. Now we don't want it to rotate all the way around, do we? 
about 45 to 50 degrees should be good. So I'm going to change this to 45 and hit tab. And that looks pretty good. We could probably go a little further. What you need to pay attention to is overhangs up here at the top. These areas that are going to overhang. You don't want to go too far up because your printer will end up, you'll need to either enable supports or your printer will end up um, drooping some of these areas. 45 to 50, I've been able to get away with 50, and I'm going to go ahead and put this one up to, let's try 50. Uh, 55 might be too much. 50. Let's see how that looks. I think that looks pretty good. Now, if your line was far away from the bottom of your text, then you'd end up with a big gap down here. This is pretty good. I got the rotation pretty good on this one. There's just a little bit of a gap, but it's not enough to worry about. If you had a big gap here, you could compensate for it. Let me go ahead and hit OK on here on this uh, rotation. Oh, the other thing to t also is if the rotation goes the wrong way, comes out the bottom of the plaque, you can come over here on the left and check this reversed box to reverse it. Uh, I'm going to hit OK because our rotation is good. But if we had too much of a gap down here, and you can see I've got a little bit of a gap. And if I wanted to get rid of this little bit of a gap so the letters actually start right at the base, oops, yeah, we're OK. If I wanted to get rid of this gap, I could come over here to the, the um, under the revolution on the left here is our shape string. I could drop the position of that shape string down a little bit, which would then drop this all down towards the surface. Let me show you. I'll come over here with the shape string selected. We'll come down here to attachment offset, position, and we'll go to Z. It says zero, and remember this shape string is mapped to this surface. So right now it is at zero millimeters off that surface. Well, I'm going to change that to negative 0.1. And when I tab away, watch this gap over here. It'll recalculate, and you see how that dropped down? So you could fiddle with that attachment offset if you wanted to get rid of that gap and have the text come right out of the right out of the plaque which I would I do so I'm going to change that to say negative point two tab and there we go that's good enough we're on we're pretty much right there just the little details you know so there's our sign well we're not quite done let's fill at the corners now um, the fillet operation would be the last thing you do. Dress up operations. Don't do those in the middle of your model. Oh, I guess I could also hide this sketch. We don't need to see that line anymore. I'll just come over here in the tree and select it and hit the space bar to hide it. Now let's fillet the corners. So I'll select a corner. I came down here and I clicked on that edge. You can see it turned green. Come up here and we'll select the fillet. And let's see what looks good. Two, three, four. We could probably even go further. I think five looks good. Okay, let's add the other edges, the other corners. So over here in the fillet operation, I will click the select button. That changes mode to selecting, and it shows us the ones that are selected as pink. As you can see down here, that corner that we have is pink. I'm going to come over here and I'm going to select that edge. See it turned pink or red. And we'll spin around. And I'm going to select that edge. And I'm going to select that edge and hit OK. And there we go. Now we got those. Let's, uh, let's do the top edge too. We'll do a second fillet for the top edge. I'm doing it separately so I can control it independently. Get to where we can see a good example of it there. Two? Yeah. Two millimeters looks good. 
I think that looks good. There we go. There's our completed desk sign ready to print. So, I hope you found that fun and uh, have fun making yourself some desk signs and maybe some signs for your friends. We'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Also, if you're not already a subscriber, click to subscribe. Join us on the Facebook channel for discussion about the videos. And if you'd like to help support this channel, please click to support me on my Patreon page.